In a linear system problem, we have a matrix and a vector as the data, and the solution is the vector x. Now we want to talk about conditioning. So conditioning asks, what happens to the solution x if the matrix or the right-hand vector b are changed? Let's start just by changing b alone. So we'll perturb b to b plus beta with the understanding that the norm of beta is small. As a result of changing b, x has to change. So we say x changes to x plus delta, where it satisfies the linear system with the new right-hand side. Let me multiply it out. And we notice that by definition, ax equals b, x solves the original problem. So this cancel out. What's left is that a times delta equals beta, or delta equals a inverse beta. So delta is the change in x, beta is the change in b. But we have to do those, measure those in relative terms when we compute the condition number. Now we simplify this by expanding this into two separate fractions and putting in what we know about delta and b. Then we'll use our properties of norms. Since the norm of a product is less than or equal to the product of the norms, we can play that game twice in the numerators. The result is that the change in x over the change in b is less than or equal to this number, which depends on the matrix A. What we might write then is that the condition number of the problem of going from b to x is norm A inverse times norm A. A similar derivation that's a little harder shows that if we want to talk about the conditioning of the problem of mapping A to the solution X, it's actually the same thing, provided the perturbation size goes to zero. That's not something we needed in the first derivation above. So what we do as a result of these two facts is we define kappa of A as the condition number of a matrix, norm of A inverse times norm A. If A is singular, it's conventional to say that kappa equals infinity. Now there's a subtle point here. When we talked about single variable problems, then the relative changes, the ratio of relative changes, is well approximated by kappa as the size of changes goes to zero. Essentially, it's like taking a derivative. But now in higher dimensions, when our data and solution are multidimensional, then we talk about magnitudes of errors. But there is still direction going on. And the way we handle that is there's sort of an implicit maximum being taken over all possible directions. So as a result, the condition number actually gives an upper bound. The norm, the ratio of norms or relative changes, is less than or equal to kappa. So instead of approximately equal to is just bounded by. Here I'm going to create a 5x5 five five matrix of a particular type known as a Hilbert matrix. As you can see, it's quite innocent looking. But even for a 5x5 five five matrix, it's moderately ill-conditioned at about 4 times 10 to the fifth. Now I'm going to engineer a system that we know the exact solution to. So x here is going to be my exact solution and then b is the right-hand side of the problem we want to solve. Now I'm going to perturb b first while trying to leave a alone. The way I'm going to do perturbations is by temporarily recasting b into single precision. So that creates an error, a relative error, on the size of about 10 to the minus 7 or 10 to the minus 8. Then I'll convert it back into double precision for all the rest of the calculations. But by that point, b has already been changed. And so I'm going to call it b hat. And if we look at the, if we use norms to find the relative size of that change, it works out to be, again, about 10 to the minus 8 or so. So now if I solve the linear system with this different b, you can see we're pretty close. They're supposed to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So in a sense, these aren't too bad. But let's look at it quantitatively. So I'm going to create, first of all, the change in the result, the relative change in the result by using norms. 
and then I'm going to compare the ratio of changing the result and changing the data. I'll compare that to kappa, which is supposed to be an upper bound on that. And we do find indeed that even though the errors, relative errors, grew by about 3 times 10 to the fourth in passing from B to X, uh, that is less, about a factor of 10 less than what kappa said could have happened. Now I'm going to repeat that by perturbing A the same way. So this time the per perturbation will be entirely in the matrix. And again, it's around 10 to the minus 8. So I'll solve the linear system now with the perturbed A and the original B and compute the changes. And again, we find that this ratio of changes is less than kappa as it's supposed to be, but it is still in some sense pretty large. We lost four digits or so in the answer. Now I'm going to change things slightly just by now asking for an 8 by 8 version of a Hilbert matrix. And as you can see the condition number has gone up a lot. It's gone up to over 10 to the 10th now. And since the size changed I had to re-engineer my problem. So here's the exact X and the B that goes with it. So now with this larger kappa I'm going to play the same game. I'm going to perturb the B data and compute x hat, or the resulting x. And you'll notice that after the first one, none of these are correct at all. They're wrong in all the digits. They don't even have the right order of magnitude. So we have well over 100% error now. And in fact, if you think about what we did to the data and multiply it, which is a change of about 10 to the minus 8, and you multiply that by kappa, which is now 10 to the 10th, well that told us that we definitely had the potential to get the answer over 100% wrong. In fact, it's about 30,000% wrong is a possible possibility. Now all of this might seem very artificial to you. Why would you perturb your data if you didn't have to? But the point is that that's happening anyway, even if we stick entirely to double precision. So let me do this without any sort of manual perturbations. I'll go up to 13 by 13. Now you see that kappa is well over 10 to the 17th power. And here's my engineered problem. And if I just do the solution using what I believe to be the original data, we're doing everything in floating point. So you see, again, things break down and we get 100% error in the later components. Well, that's because now our epsilon is machine epsilon. But even if you take something like 10 to the minus 16 and multiply it by a kappa, which is as big as 10 to the 17th, then we again have well over 1 as the possible ratio of relative errors, meaning that x has no accurate digits in the norm. Now, you probably saw that MATLAB spit out this warning here. So archon means the reciprocal of the condition number. So if it's able to estimate the condition number and find that it's greater than 1 over epsilon, so if the reciprocal is less than epsilon, then that means you may get no accurate answers in the result at all, and so you get this warning. So for all computational purposes, this matrix might as well be singular. It's so close to singular that in double precision you can't get a believable solution to the problem. Let's suppose we're solving AX equals B, and X tilde is an approximate computed solution. The difference between the true X and the computed X tilde is what we call the forward error. But we don't usually know this because that requires knowing what the true X is, and that's what we were trying to find in the first place. On the other hand, we do have access to B and A, so we can compute the difference between B and A times X tilde. That's a quantity we call the residual. Obviously the residual is zero when the error is zero, but how else can we link the two? Well, let's define the residual as R. Rearrange this to say that A times X tilde equals B minus R. What that says is that X tilde is the exact solution of a problem where we changed B to B minus R. 
using terminology from chapter one, the amount by which we change the problem in order to recover the exact x tilde is called the backward error. One final observation about the residual. So if we look at a times the error, we get the residual. In other words, another way to relate the error to the residual is through a linear system with the original matrix A. Because of that, we can say delta is the error like before, and R is the beta like before. And so the norm of R over the norm of B plays the same role as the change in B, the relative change in B. Bottom line is that in general, our algorithms can make the residual small, the backward error can be made small, even when the forward error may not be small because the condition number is large. The link between error and residual is the condition number.